We all like working with cutting edge technologies and that includes our deployments targets. But we still know that we have to deal with a lot of virtual machines. And we also know that they are not going anywhere anytime soon. So let's see how we can make even VMs cooler thanks to Azure DevOps environments. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to Code Day. This is the third video in the series dedicated to Azure DevOps environments. In the first video, and you can find the link up here if you have missed it, we explored what environments are, what benefits they bring, and how we can use it in our YAML pipelines. In the second video instead, we went deeper into the concept and we look at the integration between environments and Kubernetes clusters. Today instead, we will focus on how we can connect our VMs to Azure DevOps environments and how we can take advantage of them. Because we all know that among all the fun and cooler stuff, VMs are here to stay. Before we start, just take a minute to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other video in this series and in the other series. In this video, I will show you first how to set everything up and then I will move into exploring the advantages we have using VMs with Azure DevOps environments. Let's start. The first thing we have to do is of course to create a new environment. Let's give it a name and select virtual machine as type of resources. Click next. And here we can select the operating system. Of course, both Windows and Linux are supported. And based on the OS selection, a registration script is created. We have this PowerShell script over here and as the note here states, a personal access token is pre-inserted into the script and this spot expires in about three hours from when you firstly generate the script. All we have to do is copying the script, going to the virtual machine we want to add and opening a PowerShell terminal as administrator. This is important, otherwise you don't have enough privileges to install the agents. And then we just execute the script. What this script does is setting up the whole environment for connecting to Azure DevOps, which means it will download all the necessary components and install them into the VM. And when it's done installing, it will automatically connect to my Azure DevOps instance because of the personal assets token and the configuration we have already embedded in the script. The script also asks if we want to add any resource tag to our virtual machine. In my case, I do not want, so I just continue. And then asks for the user account that it has to use for running this service. If this was a real production scenario, you will have probably to use a domain account or another account provided by your network administrators. But in my case, for this demo, I'm just going with the system account, which is not necessarily the best option. Now our agents and our VM is completely configured and is already connected to my Azure DevOps. Let's see it in action. If I go back and I close these, here we go. My virtual machine name is web server 01 and it's already been connected to my Azure DevOps. As you've seen, super easy. And remember that the personal access token that is generated as part of this process lasts only for three hours and then expires. So you'd have to regenerate the whole script in case you're not able to use the script within three hours from its creation. Now that we have the environment in place, let's see what we can do with it. I have created this YAML pipeline to demonstrate how we can deploy to VMs. As you can see now, it only has the CI stage, so it's time to add a CD stage. As in the previous examples we've seen, we need to create a deployment job. And in the deployment job, we specify the environment. In my case, the environment name is VMs Web Dev, and we have to specify that the resource type is virtual machine. I'm not sure if this is a bug or a feature, but at least at the time of recording this video, if you use the simplified notation for environments, so just environment column name, the deployment doesn't work correctly. If instead you use the extended version like here, specifying the name and the resource type to virtual machine, everything works perfectly. Let's just save this and run this pipeline. And now that this run is finished, and please note it is the 2020.0714.3, we can go back to our environment in the VMs web dev. And as we can see here, we have the 2020.0714.3 deployed on our web server 01, which is our VM. The deployment stub provides full traceability for commits and work items, 
as well as history for deployments on environments and resources. And this is the same as we've seen in the previous videos, so I will not spend time talking about that. There is, though, something specific to virtual machine environments that I want to talk about, rolling deployments. A rolling deployment replaces instances of the older version of the application with instances of new version of the application on a predetermined set of virtual machine for each iteration. It typically waits for deployment on a specific set of virtual machine to be completed before moving to the next set of virtual machines. And what you can do is probably doing some health check on this version of the application, on the new deployed version of the application to make sure that everything is okay before moving to the next deployment phase. Implementing rolling deployments in Azure pipelines with VMs, it's fairly easy. First, let's go back to our pipeline and let's go after the deploy to dev. Let's add here a new step for deploy to prod. As you can see here, instead of using the run once strategy, we have the new rolling strategy. And this allows you to define the maximum parallel of VMs to which you want to deploy to. For example, you can set that you want to deploy to maximum two VMs in parallel, or you can set up a percentage, like for example, 20%. Let's say you have a cluster of 10 VMs, and if you set max parallel two, it will deploy to two VMs, wait for whatever you tell him to wait, and then deploy to the next two VMs, and so on and so forth. And this, as I said, is pretty useful if you want to test your deployment before moving to the next batch. You can have a root traffic lifecycle event that actually go and, for example, call your web application or do something on your application, and then another lifecycle event, the post root traffic, in which you tell it to delay, for example, for two minutes to wait for you know, error messages or whatever your application is doing. And this will be executed for each batch of deployments. And then if everything is successful, we'll move on to the next batch of VMs. And you can also customize whatever happens in case of failure or in case of success with these two other lifecycle events over here, on failure or on success. In my case, with success, I will just print out a message, while on failure, I want to roll back. So I have this rollback script over here, which will take my application offline, do something else maybe with the data or thing in that direction. So once again, this is how you implement rolling deployment with Azure pipelines using VMs environments. Rolling strategy, you set max parallel, root traffic and post root traffic, and then you handle the on failure or on success events. All right. This is how you use Azure DevOps environments with virtual machines and how convenient and easy it is to work this way. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, hit the like button below and consider subscribing if you aren't already so you will not miss any new video in this series. Thank you very much for joining me today and see you soon at Corded Dave.